Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of I have changed the title again of my YouTube channel. I decided to change it from McEwenology just to put my normal name in, my normal everything. It's a fresh new start and it's called just Tom McHugh. So no more like McEwenology, this is Tom McHugh speaking. I'm going to just go straight to the point and all on my other content that I'm going to about to show you, which I got a heck a lot of filming to do. Because out further ado, I was away for four weeks. I went on holiday for four weeks and then I just got back last night um, from a very nice plane journey, which was one of the best. I love going on a plane now. It's one of my absolute addictions. <laughs> but... I shouldn't be drinking when I'm going on a plane because <laughs> I got a bad headache. Why no one remind me? I don't know why no one remind me on that. <laughs> but today, guys, I got another playwriters video for you guys, so you guys get get a chance to see my content. I know we're in a little bit of in the dark because it is daylight. I just thought of turning my lights off because. Yeah. So, oh yeah, if you don't see this, I put, I, I came back home, um, starting gradually getting my things away and everything else. And also it's my 30th next week, so there will be more videos to come. So I have got a couple of videos. I got there. I have made two lengthy playwriters research, which I'm not going to do because my camera will murder me. My phone will say, stop filling me up, I'm getting fat. So I decided, you know what, let's just do the short and sweet ones and then everything else. So today, this is another guide to playwrights. So I'll be talking about playwriters all the time through their work. Without further ado, I want to give my absolute disclaimer that I mean... Uh, no offence with what plays I'm about to say or comments or anything else. These are just for these videos are mainly for educational purposes. So for that I research that I found on the internet and I'm combining into one video. Uh, just to give you a usual um, content warning, they might um, claims of heavy content, heavy um, themes in there. Um, such like incest, abuse. Um, I'm not saying that the playwrights have been through, I mean her work. So if you don't feel like it and um, you want to listen to any of those comments, th those topics, um, please shut out of the video and come back when you're feel feeling pretty much prepared. So today, guys, this is um, Marina Carr, who is a Irish playwright I think it's Marina Carr. I put her in the comments below. I put in the title. So, so Marina Carr is an Irish playwright that was born in Dublin in 1964. Her father is an a play a playwright and novel a novelist, and her mother is a primary school teacher, and she and she's one of the six children in her family. So. It's fascinating, really, like from like looking into um, Marina Carr, um, her father is a playwright. And if you will look back on Law Wade, another video I I done, you can go and check that out. Um, her, she didn't come from a theatre background, except um, her father. Um, her father works on computers and that she gains inspiration from her father and from one of her plays. I think it's called Other Hands. Um, go and check out that video. I'll show you there. But she has come from a writing background, Marina Carr. She's come from a writing background. And yeah. So she went to University College in Dublin, where she joined a drama society and she wrote one of her first plays. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, we, we won't go all the way through uh, plays and everything else because I struggle to find information on these plays and I normally put what I put in, I put plays that are like the ones that easily to are easily to mention and then I'll put her 
other mentions of her plays and everything else. So the, these mainly maybe because they're more community plays and not uh, her official big well-known work. But it's her work that will be will be discussed. So when we do the bigger playwriters, it will be the same. There was one playwriter who just wrote short one act plays when I looked into it. And I was just like, not enough where I come from. So anyway, so she went to so she wrote her first play and she was graduated from English and philosophy. And then she joined a MA course with the writer and playwriter of Absurd Theatre of the Absurd, Samuel Beckett, the King of the Absurd. I know who Samuel Beckett is. I would probably might do a video, comment down below if you want to see that happening and we'll see what happens. So, and now let's get into her work. Uh, so her play, her first official play that she has published it's in, in theatres. It's called The Ma in 1994 at the Abbey Theatre. This play, it, this play explore, explores four generations of women and one, one family member in the Midlands. The central character, Ma, struggles to save her marriage and the happiness of, of herself and her, and her children. This um so this play explores on how history repeats itself with the generations of family or combining in the one with no matter how the tragic actually becomes. It did it sound really interesting. It sounded like a really interesting concept and um found a really interesting concept about how women are struggling with motherhood and trying their best to reach ends me and I found it really fascinating and and using mythical folklore and and elements in all in combining the main situations just makes the play more powerful I might actually give that a read actually <laughs> so that so the themes are family history and struggle and the genre is drama so I will always put down um, what they are and everything else. So and our next play, I think, I think it's in Abbey Theatre. I don't know. Um, I didn't write down where it was first performed. I think it's the Abbey Theatre, but I will put it in the editing anyway. But this is called Portia, Portia Covelin. Again, I will I will do struggle with names of things, but I will always put them into the text. Uh, this play explores the aftermath of Portia's brother, um, of Portia's twin brother, who died in a tragic accident, and then when years went by, her brother comes back from the dead and look after her, and and comes back and uh, comes back in his ghost form, and watching her while while she's trying to cope with with the loss of him i have not read this play but i have seen clips of this play being performed and it looks so fascinating um like when you have experience through a death um death of a loved one um and their ghost form will still will be with you and it will it's a very nice comforting thing to think about and it's such a really interesting play i really love that play I'm, sound of this play. Uh, themes are haunted place and death and genre drama. And then we get to the one that is hugely successful. This is one of her big successful plays that she did and it's called By the Bogs of Cats in 1998. Um, at performed first premiered at the Abbey Theatre and then it moved to transferred to London and it's one of the her biggest play one of her biggest plays that she's done so far this play explores about a woman who was abandoned who, who was abandoned and discharged she threatened the whole community as she awaited for her mother's return to the bogs for cats and for and this play explores forgiveness and virgins and departure 
that forces the figure to entangle with history unfold at a very tragic conclusion. From looking at that play, it's just it's presented from real raw material, and it, I think it, how how it's become so successful is her story and her absurdity and her gothic themes that she used and she sound honestly like literally when i was researching this woman and researching this playwright i um she's just absolutely amazing absolutely incredible and i can't wait wait to read her plays <laughs> actually i read one of them and it's absolutely incredible the themes are death forgiveness and ve vengeance and the genre is drama. And then her next play that she released is called At the Rofflin, Rofflin's Hill 2000 at the Town Hall in Dublin. So before I will get to this um, this part here, this play will, um, will contain abuse. So if you want to skip along on this next video, you can do and, and or if you don't want to continue anymore, um please shut down uh please stop the video and you can come back for another day because this is where um it will the themes are are quite heavy so so on rough rofterin's hill um the play centers on a family on an improved prussian rural clan and it explores the the both the bassets of evil of incest abuse and brutality so with the, with within this family they with the main character red who has a relationship with his daughter for so many years and continue for years so basically like she doesn't have a relationship um with people around her age she has that rela relationship with her own father this play presents the uh the most bizarre themes to where to where it make where it makes me as makes me as a playwriter and actor that i want to read it i still want to read it. themes are incest and abuse and genre drama and then we will get to this other play that is based on a, a greek play and it's uh, the play is called or ariel in 2002 at the Abbey Theatre and with Marina Carr she write mostly her plays were first performed in Ireland um, but also perform, first performed at the Ab Abbey Theatre and then they always get transferred there. The Abbey Theatre as coming from the research on Irish drama they they are like um, the the royal the royal court in they are the royal court um, but based in Dublin and it's called the Abbey Theatre and then you got the Royal Court in London the Royal Court where they help new playwriters and current playwriters it's the same with the Abbey Theatre but helping Irish playwrights so this play is the base on Everclees's is the title I do struggle with pronunciation so the play centers on Faramon, Faramon's rich Gerald, who sacrificed his daughter as he made a bargain with God to trade her when she was 16. And Faramon has been haunted by ghosts of his past and, and his past. It's basically like if you make a decision, even trading your family members, especially your children, you can get punished for doing these sort of things. And it's that whole cycle that he gets the severe consequences that this character is going through because he wanted political power this is what from looking at the research again he wanted political power so that's what he was doing he wanted political power in order to do that he trained his daughter when she was 16 and that was like ah, oh, he sounded like a prick he sound the character sound like a prick and the play present the play presents political power and struggle and struggles and hardship that Baron have went through. And it is like that hard for him saying he wishes he shouldn't have done that, but he was so addicted to power. And that's what it does to people. 
when you're addicted to power and you wanted everything to go in your own way, you have to suffer the consequences. And this is what how Marine, Marina Carr um, has done it in that way. If I'm pronouncing her name in a Irish accent, I am part Irish when I'm doing this. So if I sound Irish throughout this video, that please just respect that because I am a part Irish as well. The themes are power, death and ghosts and the genre is drama. So this is, um, we're coming towards her last play that she's done and and then we'll get to her other plays that she has done um, as well. So, and this is her last play that she did that came to the Royal Court and it's called The Woman and the Scarecrow in 2006 at 2006 at the Royal Court. So the, it, this is was her first play that's been published at the Royal Court. Her other plays have been published in London before, but this one is her first one being performed at the Royal Court. Uh, the play focuses on a woman who is dying and she was talking to her alter ego, which is the Scarecrow. And this play does remind me more like The Wizard of Oz with the Dorothy and the Scarecrow. And it gave me those vibes when I was first read it. It gave me those vibes coming over and everything else. And it focused on the death of this woman and having her companion being with her. Like even he's not physically there and present. It's, I feel like it's a really good thing because I, from what I heard about the character, she was lonely and and she does have family, but I think she has family. I really don't, unsure, but I will get there to the, when I read the play fully, but it's about loneliness. It's really about loneliness that she suffered suffers for and as she was dying she has this this gu guiding shoulder talking to her so the themes are death and um, themes is death and genre is dr is drama and noble actors who was in this play i only featured only say noble actors um like in very few plays that i put in and this one is have Fiona Straw, for, who was in Harry Potter, Killing Eve, and all other great plays, and other great films and television, radio, and plays. She's a very good actress. Really love Fiona Straw. Ah, oh, she was amazing. And now we get to her other plays that she has played. I sort of call them my honourable mentions, like honourable mentions she put it, I put in, or I just put in other plays so here is a list of plays that she has done in the, in the past and she has released them and now we get to her method so from what i know about marina carr she she's very heavy on absurdism and surrealism like she her major influences is the samuel beckett and she uses his inspiration to combine in her writing. Another key aspect of Marina Carr's writing is Gothic theatre. Um, Gothic theatre, if you don't know what is Gothic theatre is, Gothic theatre is basically a theatre style where a lot of playwriters and theatre practitioners uses, uses horror through that aspect. So we're talking about ghosts, um, Ghosts and the fear of the unknown and everything else. So if you think on a very classical, big, major hit of goth Gothic theatre, and those are The Woman in Black and The Phantom of the Opera and currently 222. Those are the plays that are Gothic theatre. And, and for Marina Carr, she is a contemporary Gothic theatre writer. And she... Ev like especially use gothic theatre for Portia to emphasize the style with the ghosts and all ghosts of her brother and such and such and such and that is it from today's video i'm glad to be back and i got some other great videos that are be coming around around very very soon i you can tell 
<laughs> I have done my content writing notes down and everything else so I will be making more videos as the day will progress I don't know how I'm going to get to oh yeah there's one section I haven't done but I will get it done but thank you for watching my video I'm glad to be back and I'm hoping to make more videos for for the next all day and everything because in the evening I'm going to be doing a little bit of uni work and also might switch off another program I'm starting to have addictions on at the moment and that is the Vampire Diaries. I don't know I just started watching Vampire Diaries quite recently and I just loved it so so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stay in tune. Bye!